doing the exercises. Let's start with this. I invite you to do these exercises within the range of effort that you can do without cringing from pain or from fear of pain and without suppressing cringing. These are movement patterns, not stretches. Never force. Never stretch. Move within your easy range of movement. Some of the exercises may involve places in you that are painful or sore. Discomforts fade with practice done this way. Slow down enough to sense what you're actually feeling, not what you expect to feel or what you felt before. If you can feel the sensations without cringing or preventing cringing, you may do that exercise. If you find yourself cringing, you may be forcing or stretching. If you're not forcing or stretching, I suggest that you skip that exercise for now. Proceed to the next exercise in the sequence, knowing that you will return to the exercise, and as a result of the other exercises, be more fit for it. More fit for it means you will eventually be able to do it without cringing and get the desired result. You do the exercises in sections for the number of practice days stated at each section, except if you find it necessary to skip an exercise due to pain, as stated earlier. You begin each practice session with Unit 1, Part 1, and finish each practice session with Unit 1, Part 2. Here's a summary of the regimen. The Tongue Mudra. The Tongue Mudra is an evolved form of an ancient yogic technique. It involves positioning the tongue and lower jaw in a particular way, along with special breathing. This positioning creates internal feeling connections that cause spontaneous self-corrections of tension, feeling, and posture. It may seem odd that positioning the tongue in some way can cause these effects, but cause them it does. And I have often felt the effects all the way down into my sacrum as changes of tension and position. It's the first thing you should learn in the regimen. You can do the exercises in this regimen without the tongue mudra and get good results. But the results occur much more quickly if you use the tongue mudra during or immediately after practicing. There is an exception. The somatic education exercises that involve the jaws, Unit 2, Section F. It's rather impossible to do both the jaw exercises and the tongue mudra at the same time. So you follow that exercise with the tongue mudra. Self-assessment. You determine your own sacral position before each practice session. People's sacrum changes position, and you may want to make sure you're doing the exercises for the correct side. To repeat, you check the position of your sacrum before each practice session. The position of your sacrum determines your working side for the four exercise patterns of Unit 2, Sections A and D. A video tutorial provides instructions. Unit 1, Preparation. You do Unit 1 for seven practice sessions or so until you have memorized the movements. Unit 1 is preparation for Unit 2, and you do a short version of Unit 1, fewer repetitions with each practice session of Unit 2. You finish each Unit 2 section with Unit 1, Part 2, and a brief walk to integrate the changes. Unit 2, Self-Corrections and Integrations. You do Unit 2 in the forward order, A through F, and then in reverse order, E back to A, back and forth. You do Unit 2 until you are feeling much better and have difficulty determining which side of your sacrum is jammed deeper. 
Only then do you proceed to Unit 3. Unit 3, Polishing and Consolidating the Results. Unit 3 consists of integration exercises that put you together as a whole. The difference between these integration exercises and those in Unit 2 is that those in Unit 2 put together the effects of the exercises that immediately preceded the integration exercises and that follow them, whereas Unit 3 puts you together as a whole. How much to do? Once you know the Unit 1 exercises, most practice sessions take about a half hour to three quarters of an hour. Some take less, some take more. Working from the video tutorials takes longer. When you know the exercises, practice takes less time. For time convenience, you may divide sessions into two practice sessions daily, morning and evening, with one exercise per practice session. Although for comfort, I recommend that you do both exercises in one practice session. You may also practice an entire section twice daily to speed progress. Adjust practice amount to tolerance. Too little is better than too much. Too much and the results of the exercise you did get too far ahead of the results of the others, which may lead to a rebound effect or to unnecessary discomfort in the regions not yet done. If you do the Unit 2 exercises just before sleep, you may do Unit 1 Part 2, including the walk, in the mornings.